Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a poem with you from NCERT's English textbook for class 12. The title of the book is Flamingo and the title of the poem is Aunt Jennifer's Tigers. This poem is written by Adrian Rich. Before we begin the poem, let us understand about the poet. There was once a poet who said, the moment of change is the only poem. How beautiful. She was able to articulate that literature is at its finest when it is able to inspire real life changes. I think this is the core of any literature. It can shake the society to bring about that change. That is the beauty of literature. Life itself has many poetic moments and it is the role of the writer, poet, essayist to distill and convey these experiences in their work. Then only it is a creative work because any creative work would inspire us. The person who said these lines was the famous American poet Adrian Rich. Her poetry foregrounded women's experiences and inspired many feminist readings. She published 19 volumes of poetry, three collections of essays and other writings in her career spanning 60 years. Rich's work continues to be relevant even today because of her strong resistance to racism and militarism. The poem Aunt Jennifer's Tigers addresses the constraints of a married life a woman experiences. Rich believed when a woman tells the truth, she is creating the possibility for more truth around her. Introspect on these lines. When a woman tells a truth, she is creating the possibility for more truth around her. Because then many women will tell their truths. Things will come out and there can be a social movement. Now before we read, let us discuss a few things. What does the title of the poem suggest to you? What does it suggest? Is the person a circus owner or an animal welfare activist or a zookeeper? Aunt Jennifer's tigers, is she an artist painting them? Is she painting the tigers if she is not a zookeeper or she is not working in the circus? How can a woman have tigers? Let us read the poem first and we will come to know about it. And as you all know that poems are meant to be read aloud. We have to read the poem with proper tone, intonation and stress and also punctuation marks. They help us understand the meaning of the poem better because punctuation marks convey meaning in the sense that if there is a comma that means there is going to be a pause. If there is a full stop it is a greater pause and one idea has come to an end we are moving on to the next idea. You can open your books on page 103 and read the poem along. Let us read the poem. Aunt Jennifer's tigers prance across a screen, bright topaz, denizens of a world of green. They do not fear the men beneath the tree. They pace in sleek chivalric certainty, Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool, find even the ivory needle hard to pull. The massive weight of uncle's wedding band, 
sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. When Aunt is dead, her terrified hands will lie, still ringed with ordeals she was mastered by. The tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing, proud and unafraid. This is a small poem, a very short one, but tells a lot. Denizen. What does denizen mean over here? A person, an animal or a plant that lives, grows or is often found in a particular place. The inhabitants of a particular region are called denizens. And sleek is elegant. Notice the colors suggested in the poem. Bright topaz. Denizens of a world of green. Bright topaz. That means that is the color of the tigers. They are living in a forest, world of green. So, topaz is yellow and green. They do not fear the men beneath the tree. Again, green color. They pace in sleek chivalric certainty. Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull. Ivory. It's ivory color. It is not white, it is creamish. So, notice the repetitive use of certain sounds in the poem. Certain sounds are used in the poem again and again. You underline those and that will enhance the meaning of the poem. Let us discuss uh, a few phrases that have come in the poem. How do denizens and chivalric add to our understanding of the tiger's attitudes? The word denizens and chivalric add to our understanding of the tiger's attitudes. Tigers are found in the forest. They live far away from human settlements. They are called chivalric. This indicates the majestic and honorable position that they occupy in the world of animals and the imagination of humans. Even humans consider tigers as majestic animals. Animals of the forest are afraid of them, but they are considered as majestic animals even by humans. Why do you think Aunt Jennifer's hands are fluttering through her wool in the second stanza. Go back to the second stanza. You may read it on your own once again. Why is she finding the needle so hard to pull? Aunt Jennifer's fingers fluttering through her wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull. The massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. This is the stack, second stanza. Aunt Jennifer is weaving tigers for the panel. They are not real tigers. So therefore, she is not working in a circus or a zookeeper. She is weaving tigers for the panel. Her hands are moving about her wool. She is finding the needle quite hard to pull. The weight of her married life is lying heavy on her hand. So that is what the impression is. That is what we understand. That it is shown in every action. Not only her heart is heavy. She must have gone through lot of difficult times during her married life. But you know that reflects in her movement, body movement as well. Next question, what is suggested by the image massive weight of uncle's wedding band? The image is quite suggestive. The wedding band is symbolic. It represents the unbreakable bond of marriage between the husband and the wife. 
Next question of what or of whom is aunt Jennifer's terrified with in the third stanza. Old unhappy memories are still fresh in her mind. This indicates that she might have passed through many testing and horrible times during her married life. These ordeals have crushed and suppressed her. Their effect is still visible. So, she is still ringed with those ordeals that dominated her life. Next, what are the ordeals Aunt Jennifer is surrounded by? Why is it significant that the poet uses the word ringed? What are the meanings of the word ringed in the poem? Can you gather the meaning? I am giving you 30 seconds to read your third stanza and note down the points. Then we will discuss. The word ringed has been used in two ways. The first is a symbol of the sacred bond of marriage. The other is the figurative use of ringed. It means encircled or surrounded by restrictions. Are you ready for the next question? Why do you think Aunt Jennifer created animals that are so different from her own character? What might the poet be suggesting through this difference? The tigers do not fear the men beneath the tree. The tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid. Thus, what do we understand? They are symbols of strength, fierceness and beauty. Aunt Jennifer on the other hand is weak and terrified. Her hands are finding it difficult to pull through her wool. The massive weight of the wedding band sits heavily on her hand. Her terrified hands are still ringed by the odils of married life, the contrast heightens the intensity. Okay, let us move on to the next question. Interpret the symbols found in the poem. The massive weight of wedding band, what does this symbolize? We have discussed it, I am sure you know the answer. It symbolizes suffering, hardships and worries of married life. Terrified hands and ringed with ordeals also indicate those unpleasant experiences that Aunt Jennifer had to bear physically and mentally. Do we sympathize with Aunt Jennifer? Do we or do we not? What is the attitude of the speaker towards Aunt Jennifer? Yes, we do sympathize with Aunt Jennifer because we find such situations all around us. She experienced hardships and ordeals during her married life. The attitude of the speaker towards Aunt Jennifer is equally sympathetic. The poet says, the massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. When aunt is dead, her terrified hands will lie still, ringed with ordeals she was mastered by. The poet is showing the concern. Maybe this is the story of many women who do not even share their ordeals with, a, with others. But I think if it is there, it should be addressed. The speaker says that even after Aunt Jennifer's death, she will be terrified of her husband and the ordeals of her marriage. I hope the poem is clear to you. It is, you know, telling us a lot about, you know, women should not suffer, women should speak up, they should also have an equal say in a, in a, mar in a, in a marriage, you know, because they are equal partners. So, all these things have to uh, be addressed. 
Now we have come to the writing section. Find out three poems with the title Tiger. Many poets have written poems with the title Tiger. Now the task is read these poems. Find out what is common in these poems. There must be some co something common. Let me give you one example, The Tiger by William Blake, a very famous poem. I will read a few lines from the poem. Tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? So therefore, the task is to find out three poems and find out what is common in them. The next task is find three poems in English by contemporary women poets from India and write a review of how they reflect or comment on the world around them. You can also include a discussion of their styles or any words or phrases that especially struck you. Like we have discussed phrases in this poem, how they convey meaning, they bring about meaning and they make us think about it. So you have to also identify those words and phrases that especially struck you and write a review. With this we have come to the end of the poem and I want you to read the poem again with proper stress, tone and intonation. Enjoy reading the poem. Thank you.